around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Marshal? What? Marshal, I've been looking for you. Oh, hello, Tosh. I just want to ask you one question. All right, go ahead, ask. Are you, are you not sworn as a matter of bound and duty to uphold law and order in Dodge City? <laughs> well, I guess you could put it that way. Then why don't you get up from that there table and go out and find that cow? No, cow. Oh, goodness, you think all Mr. Jones got to do is go around hunting some scrawny old cow? You keep your mouth shut, Chester. No, just a doggone minute here. Ain't nobody going to uh, smart off the deal. Down, like that. Chester, well, sit down, Chester. Sit down. I... You too, Tush. You keep waving your arms like that, you're going to get apoplexy. I ain't got no time to sit down, Marshal. I got 1,400 head of cattle over across the river, balling in the frothing. I got buyers up at the Dodge House willing to pay for near anything I ask because I'm bringing in the first trail herd of the season, providing I can. Marshal, you've got to find out what happened to Oni Hager and that gall dying cow of his. Well, how do you know anything has happened to him? They ain't at that shack of his, neither one of them. If he was just going best, then he wouldn't take the cow, would he? He might. Only Hager's pretty crazy about that cow. You shut up, Chester. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask if you asked. I was just saying, Moon says uh, I All right, didn't ask. all right, Chester. Look, Tosh, why don't you just sit down and have a beer, huh? Only will be back in his own good time. Well, his good time ain't mine. Bert Collins is bringing a herd up for the Circle C. Ain't more than two days behind me. And if he gets his cattle across that river and into them shipping pens first, he'll get the big price and not me. Well, I'll check around town in the morning to see if anybody knows where Oni went. Hard to ask his neighbors. They ain't seen him for, for four or five days, or the cow either. And, Marshal, I'm reminding you of your sworn duty. My sworn duty doesn't include going out and scouring the countryside for a missing cow, Tush. Not even if there's been foul play done? What are you talking about? That shack of his has tore up something awful, like there was a big fighting ruckus in it. Is that the only reason you think something's happened to Oni, the way the place looks? Marshal Burke Collins wouldn't stop at nothing to get that herd of his in ahead of me. He's just low down mean enough. Well, it's too late to start tonight, but I'll see what I can find out first thing in the morning. That's all I'm asking, Marshal, for you to enforce the law and protect the innocent and bring a guilt into justice. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to do all of that, Tush, the first thing in the morning, huh? Now, why don't you check in at the Dodge house and try to get some sleep? I doubt I'll close my eyes. All them cattle on the far side of the river, all that money on this side, I won't sleep a wink, Marshal, but I hope you pass the way. Thanks, Tush. My goodness, Mr. Dillon, all that fuming and fretting over a 16-year-old cow that's a dang skinny or hip bone stick out like a hubs on a wagon wheel. Yeah, but she comes in handy, though, for a job like this. Oh, Matt. Yes, sir. Oh, hello, Kitty. Oh, Kitty. Sit down. Uh, you like to have some beer? Yeah, thanks. All right. Um, what's Tush Lee all worked up about, Matt? Oh, he's got a trail herd that he wants to bring across the river. He's pretty upset because he can't find Oni Hager and that cow of his. What's only Hager's cow got to do with it? Well, for land's sake, Miss Kitty, everybody knows you got to have a cow or a steer that's a good swimmer and it'll take the lead if you want to drive a herd across water. Well, I didn't know it. Is that true, Miss? Yeah, yeah, that's true. See, a lot of herds have a natural leader or two, and uh, if they'll take to water, the rest of the cattle will follow them across. But you, you try to force the herd in, the chances are they'll panic, and half of them will drown. Huh. I never heard of it. Oh, Honey Hager makes a lot of money every season just leading the herds across the Arkansas. <laughs> that old cow of his takes to water like a duck. Well, then it's not a joke. Without that cow, Tush is in trouble. I'm sure he's in trouble. When Bert Collins hits here in a couple of days with his herd, there's going to be more trouble. 
But he's already here, Matt. Huh? Collins? Yeah, yeah. I, I seen him on the street this afternoon. Ain't he due in yet? No. He must have had a gun ahead. Mr. Dillon? Tuff said that shack the Onis is all tore up like they'd been a fight. Yeah. And Oni's not one to go off on sudden trips. You know something, Kitty? I think you're right. It's not a joke. Now, just listen a minute. Or uh, if you will. I've got a little story to tell you. Well, it's not so little. It's sort of a tall tale. It's about a drought-busting weather conjurer named Feebold Feebolson. Why, they say Kansas never had a drought that he couldn't bust in 24 hours. <laughs> they say he had at least a hundred different ways of doing it, too. Once, when it got so hot that folks had to spend half their time in some lake to keep from drying up and blowing away, old Feebold figured it was time for a little rain. Well, he thought on the problem for a while... Then he went out and built huge fires all around the lakes and kept them a-going until the lakes started boiling and the water got to vaporizing. These vapor clouds rose up from the lakes so fast, they slammed into one another and started raining all over the place. <laughs> well, sir, once primed, the rains came again and were soon back on schedule. Feebold saved the country that time. That wasn't the only time that Feebold saved the country either. There were others, too. Like the time he used the noise method to make rain. Oh, he didn't use cannons and rockets and the like. He was original. He used frogs. Now, Feebold realized that frogs wouldn't croak unless they were good and wet, so he hypnotized a couple of them and told them it was raining. <laughs> well, sir, it would have done your heart good to hear them frogs croaking with joy and spreading the news around. Soon every frog in the country was croaking as loud as he could, which was loud enough to give an Indian rain god a skull-splitting headache. Well, the amount of noise turned out to be just right, and the rains just poured down. Of course, old Feebold could only use that method once a year, because so much rain would come down that the frogs would get washed clear down to the Gulf of Mexico, and it'd take them near a year to get back home. Rain, fog, sleet, snow, heat, or what have you, old Feebold had a way to handle the situation. Why, I remember the time it... No, I, I hadn't better tell you that one. Why, it's almost unbelievable. And I don't want to take a chance on making you think that I might stretch the truth just a little bit. <laughs> Say, isn't it nice being citizens of a country where you can laugh and talk about things free as a breeze and write and read and worship, too? Yes, sir. Maybe you don't think about it much, but you should. <laughs> Good to get back, Mr. Dillon. I'm terrible hungry. Matt! Oh, Matt! Huh? Wait a minute. Oh, hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. I want to talk to you. All right. Oh. Uh, uh, Chester, you, you go on ahead if you want. I'll meet you at the restaurant, huh? Well, I am feeling pretty empty, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I'll go on in. I'll see you later, Doc. Yep, right, Chester. <laughs> Well, what's yeah. on your mind, Doc? Well, uh, Matt, uh, what are you planning to do today? <laughs> Work, same as the other six days every week. Work? Oh, work. You mean sitting down there in that jail office with your feet on the desk? <laughs> no, not today, Doc. i got to track down a cow. A cow? <laughs> a cow on that. See, Matt, so you come along with me. Oh, huh? where? But i got to look in on a couple of patients out toward Kiowa Meadows. Now, it won't take long. And we'll have the rest of the day to shoot us some prairie hens. Prairie hens? This time of year? My doc, the only prairie hen around here right now are holed up in the plum thicket so deep that a weasel couldn't even get to. Ah, now that's just where you're wrong. Oh. You know how Kiowa Meadows is protected by that bend in the river? Uh, those high bluffs on the north side there? Oh, yeah, yeah. And these last few weeks, it's been mighty warm for this time of year. Yeah. Well, it's made a kind of a false spring out there in the meadow. Now, the way I hear it, it's just as green as May. 
Or the stand, the young clover coming up there. And wild timothy and buffalo grass. And, oh, and the prairie hens are just swarming. You know something? That's possible, Doc. I remember something like that happening a few years back. Well, come on, then. Let's get out there and get at it. Oh, Doc, I already told you. I gotta find the cow. What? Are you serious? Yes. I thought that was a joke. I wish it was. Uh, say, you haven't seen anything of Oni Hager, have you? You mean Oni's cow? Uh-huh. Oh, my. That old bag of bones. Well, if that old bag of bones doesn't turn up pretty quick, it's going to cause the worst fight that this town's ever seen. Oh, fight? Now, who the staff would have bothered to fight over that scrawny old walking carcass, huh? <laughs> Except Oni, of course. No, not Oni. A couple of pretty tough boys named Burke Collins and Tush Lee. See, Oni's disappeared, and that's the trouble. Touch thinks that Collins has had something to do with it. I'm not too sure, but what he may be right. Eh? Well, what do you mean? Well, Chester and I just got back from a look at Oni's shack this morning. I'm going to fight him, all right. The cook stove's knocked over. Table's smashed. No sign of Oni or the cow anywhere. Oh, well, gee, Matt, maybe he went on a trip. He took his cow along? Oh. Oh, well, no. He... See, Matt... If any done something to poor old Oni, he ought to be hung. Well, I feel the same way, Doc. He's got his faults, but he's a harmless old coot, and, and he never did any hurt to anybody in his whole life. Yeah. It kind of looks like somebody did some hurt to him, though. I just don't seem to have no appetite at all lately, Mr. John. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that, Chester. You only had six eggs. Well, I don't mean I don't eat exactly. But I just don't seem to relish it so much anymore. Oh, I see. Well, maybe if you uh, cut down on the quantity a little bit, maybe... Uh... No. No, it ain't that, I don't think. Oh. Uh-huh. See, it's just more like I've been feeling poorly lately. Nothing particular exactly, just... Kindly sore all over. Tell me something, Chester. You, you you didn't start getting these feelings just a few minutes ago, did you? When uh, when I told you about Doc going hunting today? Oh my goodness, no, Mister John. I no, I I've been having these pains for a long time. Oh, oh I see. Uh, of course, now that you mention it. I declare, I, I bet it sure wouldn't do me no harm to... Get out in the open for a while, huh? Oh, like man. around Kiowa Meta, for instance, huh? <laughs> Prairie hen makes mighty good eating. I, I heard you say that yourself many a time. <laughs> Doc's already promised us some, Chester. Oh, Doc's already... Look, seeing is believing. Doc can't hit the side of a barn with both hands and a board in the middle. You know that. Mac. Uh, hello, Kitty. Matt, you better get over the Long Branch right away. Oh, uh, why? What's wrong? Well, Tush and Bert Collins are over there, sidling around each other like a pair of tomcats. It's going to bust loose any minute, Matt. Uh, come on, Chester. <laughs> I got some flapjacks here on the air. Well, bring them with you. There they are, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Everybody knows what kind of people some people are, and with them kind, proven they ain't needed. Well, now, a man that never had no friend his whole born day should not expect nobody here to agree with him. Matt, if we get another mirror broke well, this month, we might as well close up. Uh, we'll see what we can do, Kitty. Uh, you stay here, Chester. Yes, sir. I'm Want saying you made off with Arnie Hager and that cow of his, and more than likely, you've done him in. Now, that's a lie. And I'm going to break you in pieces for it. Well, you can start whenever you're... All right, ready. hold it, both of you. Huh? Well, there's your murderer, Marshal. Do your duty now. Marshal? Marshal? A man shouldn't ought to go telling lies about somebody, had he? What are you doing in town, Collins? I thought your herd was still a day or so south of the river. Well, I rode in ahead. Wanted to talk to them cattle buyers. Come in to steal that cow and murder Oni Hager. That's what he done. Have you seen Oni, Collins? Why'd I want to see him? I got two, three good swimmers in my herd. You gonna rest him or ain't you, Marshal? I'm afraid I haven't got much reason to, Tush. All right. I'm gonna take the law into my own hands. 
I wouldn't advise that, Tush. I give you your chance, Marshal. If you ain't gonna do your job, I'm gonna bring my boys into town. We'll do it for you. Tush, come back. Well, now, crazy fool. The man is gonna be attacked. He shouldn't ought to just stand around and do nothing to protect himself, should he? Now, wait a minute, Colin. Wait Colin. nothing. I'm going to camp and get some of my boys, Marshal. Yeah, that doggone old cow sure is causing a lot of trouble, ain't he, Mr. Young? Yeah. And it's going to get worse. we tend to group Nebraska with one or another of the states, the Cornhusker state has many characteristics which are strictly its own. Since 1875, for example, Nebraska has been a debt-free state which preferred to spend 10 years building the capital at Lincoln rather than spend money it didn't have. Further, as its name may indicate, corn is its most important crop. And Omaha's stockyards are among the largest in the world. Then there's historic Chimney Rock near Bayard and the town of Alliance, which was once almost sold by the Burlington Lines Railroad. Many years of tears and Indian wars and hardships such as the Grasshopper Plague contributed to the words which are engraved upon the capital. Honor to pioneers who broke the sods that men to come might live. Nebraskans live by these words, and they live for them. <laughs> Something like this just keeps my nerves tore to pieces. Just... Mr. Dillon? <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Shut the door, Chester. Oh, Chester. Mr. Dillon, what are you aiming to do? Sit here and digest my breakfast? Why? But they're going to be at it any minute now. Who is? Tush Lee and Bert Collins. You ain't forgot about them, have you? No, but I wish I couldn't. Well, they're in town right now, both of them, and they got their men with them. Yeah, I know. Well, if you already know, why don't you do something? Like what, Chester? Well, my land, you could... At least you could go... Well, maybe if you couldn't do that, you... Well, you can't just sit here and, and let them kill each other. Oh, no, but I can sit here until I'm sure that that's what they're going to do. Yeah, but they are. They are. That's what I'm telling you. Tush is up there at the Long Branch saying how he's going to hang Bert, and Bert's down the other end of the street making his brag about how he's going to shoot Tush so full of holes that birds can fly through. Chester, if all the killing that's talked about in Dodge City was actually done, Boot Hill would be 10 miles wide and 20 miles long. But these two are really going to. Then I'll deal with it when it starts. And that'll be any minute now. My... Everybody else in town thinks so, too. T take a look out this window. There ain't a soul in the street except for some crazy fool leading a... Leading a... Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what's the matter? Tony Hager. What? Huh? Oh, he's got his cow. He ain't dead at all. Come on. Hey, Arnie! Wait up a minute, will you? And, and look, there's Tush at the door of the long branch there. Yeah. And there comes Collins and his men. It's him. Morning, Morning Marshal. Chester. Morning. Looking up to be another mighty pleasant day now. Or wouldn't you say so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fine, fine day, Arnie. Where have you been? You no. Know, me and Ida Bell here has been up to Kiowa Meadows for a few days. Kiowa Meadows? Oh, my goodness. It's just like spring up there. It's all new grass and fresh clover, and Ida Bell ain't at nothing but dry feed all winter. He's just done her a world of good. Ain't that right now, dearie? Ah. Uh, hey, hush! What? Come on out of here. You too, Collins. And both of you come alone. You had any excitement around town while I've been gone, Marshal? Excitement? Oh, no. Uh, none to speak of, Oney. Uh, things have been pretty quiet. Oney, did you see any prayer hand up in Kiowa, Meadows? Oh, my, yes. 
There was just scads of them. I'm mighty glad you got away from him, Oni. Did it hurt you bad? Oh, oh now shut up and listen to me, both of you. Before you start taking the law into your hands again, Tuss, you better stop and think for a minute. Oni's only been away on a little trip. Collins here had nothing to do with it. What? It's true. Tell him, Oni. Well, well, I don't know what you're talking about, but me and Ida Bell's been up to, to Kiowa Middle. <laughs> Well, there you are, Tush. Look, I told you. Well, how's I to know? Well, you didn't know. And it's like I said, a man hadn't all to say what he ain't sure of. I reckon I was kind of in the wrong, all right. Well, that's for dang sure. And you made me look real bad, Tush. Yeah, I, I guess I did. Bird, I, I might set up drinks if you was a mind. Oh, all right. You ain't got to say that but one time. Let's go. Honey, will you have that cow down the river in a couple of hours? I got a job for her. Well, I'm mighty sorry, but Ida Bell can't do no swimming today. She can't? Well, why not? Well, she ate too much green clover, and she ain't going to be fit to go in the water before tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Oh, forget it, Tush. Throw your herd in with mine. We'll swim them across together. Well, then we'll hold out for the same price with them cattle buyers. Fair enough. Well, all right. Come on, let's get that drink. Okay. Say, Oni. Yeah? If you went off on a trip on your own choice, now how yeah. come your house was all tore up so bad that way? Yeah. Well, that was on account of Idabel. She didn't know where we was going, and she put up an awful ruckus before I convinced her. But it wasn't the barn that was tore up. It was the house. Well, of course it was. Where do you expect me to keep her outdoors? <laughs> no, no, Oni. Nobody would expect you to keep that cow any place except right in the house. and directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.